Once upon a time, a person went to Gautam Buddha, seeking advice on how to control his emotions. The person was struggling with anger and frustration, and he was looking for a way to manage his emotions. Better Buddha smiled and asked him to sit down. He said, I will tell you a story once upon a time. There was a king who ruled a prosperous country. One day he decided to visit the neighboring kingdom he had heard, that the king of that kingdom was famous for his wisdom. When the king arrived, he was welcomed with great honor. The king of the neighboring kingdom had prepared a grand feast in his honor. During the feast, the king noticed a fly in his soup. He was disgusted and ordered his servant to bring him another bowl of soup. The king of the neighboring kingdom saw this and said, Your Majesty, please do not be angry. It was just a small fly. It does not matter, the king replied. I cannot tolerate such things. Even a small fly can ruin my mood. The king of the neighboring kingdom smiled and said, Your Majesty, allow me to give you a piece of advice. It is not the fly that ruined your mood, but your reaction to it. You have the power to control your emotions. Do not let them control you. The king realized the wisdom in these words and returned to his kingdom. From that day onwards, he started practicing the art of not reacting to situations that would previously trigger his emotions. He found that he was able to maintain his composure in challenging situations and was able to make better decisions. The power of not reacting is an important lesson for all of us. We often react to situations without thinking and this can lead to negative consequences. Reacting to situations with anger and frustration can damage our relationships with others and hinder our ability to make clear-headed decisions. However, it is important to understand that not reacting does not mean that we should suppress our emotions. Emotions are a natural part of our human experience and is important to acknowledge them. Instead of reacting impulsively, we should take the time to process our emotions and spawn. In a thoughtful manner, in another part of the world, there lived a young man named Michael was a very emotional person, and he often reacted impulsively to situations that upset him. He would get angry and say hurtful things, which would lead to arguments and hurt feelings. One day, Michael decided to take control of his emotions. He knew that his impulsive reactions were causing more harm than good, and he wanted to change, he started practicing mindfulness and meditation, which helped him become more aware of his thoughts and emotions. He also started practicing the art of not reacting whenever he found himself in a situation that would normally trigger his emotions. He would take a step back and take a few deep breaths. He would then assess the situation cornally and respond in a thoughtful manner. At first, it was difficult for Michael to control his emotions. He would still get angry and frustrated, but he would take a step back and not react impulsively as he continued to practice. He found that it became easier to control his emotions. Michael also noticed that his relationships with others improved. He was no longer getting into arguments and hurting people's feelings instead. He was able to communicate in a calm and thoughtful manner which helped him build stronger relationships. One day, Michael's friend came to him for advice. His friend was going through a difficult time, and he was feeling very upset. Michael listened to his friend's problems and offered words of comfort and support. His friend thanked him and said, You always know just what to say. You never get angry or upset. Michael smiled and replied, it's not that I never feel angry or upset, it's just that I've learned to control my emotions and not let them control me. It's a powerful tool that has helped me improve my relationships and my overall well-being. Michael's friend was impressed and asked him how he learned to control his emotions. Michael shared his experience with mindfulness and the power of not reacting. He encouraged his friend to try it out for himself and his friend was grateful for the advice over time Michael became known for his calm and thoughtful demeanor. He was able to handle difficult situations with ease and people admired him for his strength and resilience. He continued to practice mindfulness and the art of not reacting, and he found that it brought him a sense of inner peace and happiness. The power of not reacting is a valuable lesson that we can all learn from it. 
takes practice and patience, but the rewards are well worth it by controlling our emotions. We can improve our relationships, make better decisions, and live a more fulfilling life. The morale of the story of the King and Michael teaches us that we have the power to control our emotions. We may not be able to control what happens to us, but we can control how we react to it by practicing mindfulness and the art of not reacting. We can learn to control our emotions and respond in a thoughtful manner. It's a powerful tool that can help us improve our relationships, our well-being, and our overall quality of life. So let us take the time to practice and cultivate this powerful skill and let it transform our lives for the better anger will never disappear. So long as thoughts of resentment are cherished in the mind, anger will disappear just as soon as thoughts of resentment are forgotten. He who holds back rising anger like a rolling chariot hear my call a real driver other people are but holding the reins holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die one who conquers himself is greater than another who conquers a thousand times a thousand on the battlefield do not be led by your reactions be led by your actions peace comes from within do not seek it without in a controversy the instant we feel anger we have already ceased striving for the truth and have begun striving for ourselves, the mind is everything what you think you become. You will not be punished for your anger. You will be punished by your anger. The root of suffering is attachment. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Letting go gives us freedom, and freedom is the only condition for Happiness, if in our heart we still cling to anything, anger, anxiety, or possessions, we cannot be free. Better than a thousand hollow words is one word that brings peace. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. Respond. Don't react. Respond. With reason, not emotion. In the end, only three things matter. How gently you lived and how gracefully you let go. Things not meant for you. He who experiences the unity of life sees his own self in all beings and all beings in his own self and looks on everything with an impartial eye. Happiness never decreases by being shared. We are shaped by our thoughts. We become what we think. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Three things cannot be long hidden. The sun. The moon and the truth, the only way to find true happiness is to let go of your attachment to things and people. The mind is everything, what you think you become. It is a man's own mind, not his enemy or foe, that lures into evil ways. An idea that is developed and put into action is more important than an idea that exists only as an idea. There is no fire like passion. There is no shark like hatred. There is no snare like folly. There is no torrent like greed. What we think we become, all that we are arises. With our thoughts, with our thoughts, we make. The world, if you want to fly, you have to give up what weighs you down. If you want to change the world, change yourself. First, happiness is not something ready made. It comes from your own actions. The trouble is you think you have time. The mind is like water when it's turbulent. It's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. The tone like a sharp knife hills without drawing blood. Do not seek to follow in the footsteps of the wise. Seek what they sought. Purity or impurity depends on oneself. No one can purify another. Let us rise up and be thankful for. If we didn't learn a lot today, at least we learned a little. And if we didn't learn a little, at least we didn't get sick. And if we got sick, at least we didn't die. So let us all be thankful. The only real failure in life is not to be. True to the best one knows the past is already gone. The future is not yet here. There's only one moment for you to live. To be idle is a short road to death. And to be diligent is a way of life foolish. People are idle wise. People are diligent Hatred does not cease by hatred, but only by love. This is the eternal rule. Whatever a monk keeps pursuing with his thinking and pondering that becomes the inclination of his awareness. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. 
Concentrate the mind on the present moment. The mind is everything what you think you become. Do not look for a century in anyone except yourself. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle as with all matters of the heart. You'll know when you find it. The greatest glory in living lies not in their falling, but in rising every time we fall. No one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may we ourselves must walk the path foreign.